welcome to day three coverage of Arch Madness. It's semi-final day and Rambler Sports Locker was here again to get you caught up. I'm here, I'm Joaquin Kerrigan. I'm here with Emma Wheeler and Nader Issa. Um, so let's get into the first game. The first game was a, a matchup between Wichita State and Illinois State. Let's see what happens. Day three started off with Wichita State beginning its quest to repeat as MBC champions. The Redbergs' one mission to prevent that from happening. So would they do it? Deshaun Knight started his campaign off with a pull-up jumper right here, but it was Wichita State that got off to the quicker start. Evan Wessel hits the three. Then watch closely here, because these are two different plays. Ron Baker jumps the passing lane, swipes the ball, and then throws down the dunk, not once, but twice. The man was red hot in the first, breaks down the defender with the turnaround J. Baker had 13 points, four rebounds, and five assists in the first half. Wichita State up by eight, 30 to 22. Redbirds switched the ignition to on in the second. Akun Purcell with the Afro connection to Lynch. However, it was the Tonight Show in St. Louis on Saturday. The guard lit it up from long distance. He uses the screen right here for another tray. Knight's electric performance earned the lead and actually put Wichita behind by three with just seconds to go. Van Vliet takes it the length of the court. And he's gonna heave up a last dish effort right here. And it is no good. ISU upsets the number eight team in the country to move on to championship Sunday. The final score was 65-62. Redbirds, Knight finished with 25 points. Van Vliet had 19 for Wichita State. And I don't think anybody really expected that outcome. Absolutely <laughs> not. What do you what what went right for ISU today? Because Wichita State didn't seem like that they they played that bad of a game. You know you're right, and you know if we're all looking for an upset, we finally got one. But the one thing that went right, Deshaun Knight. He was unstoppable tonight. He had 31 points. He had four rebounds. Um, Dan Muller, the head coach, said in the press conference, he said. A win like this to take on the number one seed, they need one person to step up their game, and that's exactly what they got for Deshaun Knight. They couldn't be stopped. And the other thing, you know, Wichita State, they have this phenomenal press defense that they need fast breaks. And in Illinois State, they were able to stop that. The Wichita State wasn't able to have that transition defense, so they were able to beat that press, which is one thing a lot of teams weren't able to do. It seemed like Wichita State had their transition game going in the first half. It seemed like highlight play after highlight play was happening with Van Vliet and uh, to Kale Cotton. Mm -hmm. Ron Baker had 13 points in the first half and thought he was out going to have a breakout game. What exactly happened in the second half for them? Why, why did they lose the lead and why did they not pull it out in the end? You know, they, I wouldn't even target on anything specific. They lost a little bit of their energy. They didn't have the same effort that they were putting through. ISU had a couple runs where they, they you know, caught back up and it was a one possession game for most of the time. And I think that that momentum that they had just kind of made them their effort fall back. And Ron Baker, the shots weren't dropping and they might have gotten a little frustrated, but they weren't able to pull it out. I think Wichita State felt like that they walked into this game thinking they, that they would win and they didn't mm -hmm. bring the intensity they probably should have. So number eight, the number eight team in the nation Falls here in the semifinal day. Another top uh, 25 team, Northern Iowa, was also playing in the semifinal game, and they were playing against our very own Loyola. Let's see what happens. Loyola, fresh off a huge win versus Indiana State, now has to face the number 11 team in the country. Montel James and Co. go up against Seth Tuttle and the Panthers. Tuttle had it going from the get-go, takes a dribble to set himself, and then hits a deep J in Christian Thomas's face. A little of the magic the Ramblers had on Friday carried over. Milton Doyle throws the oop to Earl Peterson, who says thank you very much. But Tuttle answered right back with the righty hook. The bucket was part of an 8-0 run capped by this Bohannon tray right here. You and I up 22-11, just past the halfway mark of the first. Doyle got it going late in the period, hits the corner pocket three ball. That would be a swish. And then the nifty spinning fader right after that to cut the lead to 7, 28 to 21. However, with the clock winding down, Doyle coughs up the ball and you and I scores, killing any momentum Loyola had going into the half. The Panthers up 32 to 23. Montel James with seven points, Seth Tuttle with nine to the second. 
Loyola trying to stick around, but Wyatt Lojas has other ideas, scores the transition bucket to put UNI up 42 to 28. Mon Meanwhile, Montel James seemed to be the only Rambler playing offense. Hits the baseline, Jay still down 15 though. Deficit wouldn't get much closer than that. Jeremy Morgan makes sure of that. Three points. There was a scare late in the game. Jeff White pressuring the ball handler gets absolutely rocked by a Seth Tuttle screen. He lays on the floor for several minutes before trainers helped him up off the court. He would return to the bench with some ice on his neck a few minutes later. In garbage time, Tuttle scores the last of his 13 points. UNI went 63 to 49. Montel James had a game high 14 points. Loyola Coach Moser, thoughts after the game. You, know, you, you, you have to really play well <laughs> um, to beat Northern Iowa. They just do so many things. They make you have long possessions because they take so many things away defensively. There's a reason why they have 29 wins or 30. There's a reason why they're top 7, 8 defense. And, um, we just never can get any kind of pace going because they just grind you out defensively. So you got to credit that their, their defense and um, you just have to play really well and physical to beat that team. Not the outcome Loyola was hoping for after such a huge win last night versus Indiana State. Why weren't they able to replicate um, what happened last night, that, that trouncing of the Sycamores? Yeah, I think uh, the, the size today for Northern Iowa really bothered them. Seth Tuttle, um, he was unstoppable in the paint. First half, he got whatever he wanted. There's nothing the Ramblers could do. Montel James, he looked, he looked like a high school basketball player next to Seth Tuttle. It looked like Tuttle was playing at the local Y instead of the Scott Trade Center in the paint. Um, there's, there's nothing they could do to stop him. The Ramblers shooting, um, yesterday they're hot, obviously. That's only going to happen every once in a while. To shoot that well, you're going to need to have some luck, not just skill. And today they didn't have luck on their side. I mean, Montel James, he was saying he looked like a high school player out there, but he did have 14 points tonight. Yeah. And, he, and I think he was pretty much the only consistent player for the, the he, Ramblers. He was. There's, there's times, I think most of his uh, most of his positive plays, I'd say, came when Tuttle, Tuttle was on the bench. He, didn't, he couldn't get much going on the offensive end. Tuttle was just too big. Um, once he did get stuff going, they would come and double him, just like they would double Christian Thomas a lot in the post. And then on the defensive end, there's nothing he could do to stop Tuttle. He, he did have a, a nice stat line at the end of the game, but I don't think him or the rest of his teammates played that well. No one stood out to me for Loyola. Yeah, it seemed like that they were they went into this game with the idea, the idea of trapping Tuttle in the, in the post, mm -hmm. but they weren't. Tuttle is such an effective passer from, from that position on the court that it's that they were just breaking that yeah. problem. Do you think that they should have switched to a different type of defense and combat that? I think they should have. He's, most of the doubles are very predictable, coming from really predictable places. Um, he wasn't surprised by anything that the defense was doing, and they didn't seem like they changed the game plan at all. To start the second half, it was more of the same. Uh, Tuttle was still getting anything he wanted, and the Ramblers just had no answer for him or Buss on the perimeter. This was conceivably Christian Thomas's last game. Why do you think he struggled so much in this game? I mean, obviously a lot was riding on it for him. Yeah. Um, was it, again, the size factor? I think I think the size was the biggest factor in the game. Just like Montel James, Christian Thomas um, just could not get anything going on the inside. Uh, the perimeter perimeter play for the Ramblers didn't help. Ben Richardson, uh, career night last night with uh, five made three pointers, 100% from the three point line. He was I think 0 for two, 0 for three. He from three he couldn't get anything going. Milton Doyle struggled tremendously. Jeff White got hurt at the end, but he wasn't playing very well. Um, I think the, the reason the Ramblers played so well yesterday was they balanced that terrific post play they had with a great shooting and great, um, great perimeter play, backcourt play. And tonight they just didn't, couldn't get anything going and the backcourt not playing well affected Christian, Christian Thomas tremendously. Simply put, uh, Loyola was overmatched by Northern Iowa today. Is Northern Iowa for real? Are they going to win this? And how far do you think they're going to go into March Madness? I think they're going to have a a little bit of a tough time tomorrow against uh, Illinois State. I still think they're going to win the tournament, um, but I, I don't see it as, as a gimme game at all. Um, I think Illinois State can play them tough. I think they have the, the energy and the type of defense that can really challenge Northern Iowa tomorrow. As for March Madness, um, 
Tuttle, obviously, I think he's he's one of the best players in the country. I, I'm not sure how far they can go with the – at times they're inconsistent. Even today against the Ramblers, the Ramblers didn't play well at all, but it was still a 10-point game, 12-point game the entire game. They just couldn't pull away from Loyola until the very last minute or two when they um, – in garbage time, they, they had some some extra buckets. I don't think they'll go too far in March Madness, but you never know. Um, it'd be nice to see Illinois State win and have two or three teams from the MVC in March Madness. So we'll see. Well, that puts a wrap on Loyola's season. It was it was quite a good season given the shortcomings they had this year. Um, there is one more game, however, in the MVC tournament, March Madness. Northern Iowa taking on Illinois State tomorrow. We all look forward to that, and we'll have. Day four coverage, championship coverage tomorrow on Sunday, championship.